Welcome to this video. The title says implicit differentiation, but we'll do a little bit more. So the topics we will cover, let me put the slide with the contents here, are the derivative of the inverse function. So in the previous video, we have seen that if you have a function, um, say a function f that maps x to y that if your function f is one to one we can find g which is f inverse and f and g are each other's inverses now the functions are, are related so for all points in the domain we know that f of g of x equals x and also g of f of x also equals x so there is a special relation between f and g and you can wonder whether something similar holds for the derivatives and that is true um, but it's a bit more complicated than this relation between f and g then implicit differentiation is a technique when you for instance have given a curve think for instance um, of x squared plus y squared equals 9 so that's a circle with radius three and center the origin how can you find a tangent line and this is quicker than solving for y and then differentiating y and we will use this implicit differentiation technique to find the derivative of the arc sine arc cosine and arc tangent so quite a bit to do let's start with the first topic the derivative of the inverse function So, saying that f and g are each other's inverses means that f of g of x equals x. And to find now a relation between the inverses, or the derivative, sorry, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this relation and I'm going to differentiate on both sides of the equation. Well, on the right side, if I differentiate x, I find 1. And on the left side, well, if you differentiate f, you get f prime of g of x. And then with the chain rule, we find an additional g prime x. So apparently, g prime x equals 1 over f prime g x. So this tells you the derivative of g in terms of the derivative of f. But the tricky point here, and I will give an example in a second if you think this is all too abstract and theoretical. But the problem, or, well, difficulty is that if you want to know it at x, then you should take the other derivative at gx, so not at the same point. So I'm going to show you an example in a second. So here is the derivation. We have f of g of x equals x. We differentiate both sides and then we have this expression. So the theorem is that g prime of x, the derivative of the inverse function, g is the inverse function, is 1 over f prime gx. So let's see how this works in practice. The main idea is that to find g prime, you do not really have to find the function g itself. That, of course, would be an alternative. If you have a function f, you can find the inverse and differentiate it. But we don't want to follow that route. And the reason is here, for instance. So let's say that we have this function f of x here. So it's x to the power 5 plus 3x to the power 3 plus 2x plus 1. And it is given that it has an inverse g. And the question is to find g prime 7. Now, the difficulty is that it is, it, is, it is hard to find that. So you could try and say, well, y is x to the power 5 plus 3x to the power 3 plus 2x plus 1. And then we should try and solve for x if we want to have the inverse. We need to have x as a function of y then. Since we have a fifth degree polynomial, that is going to be quite hard. So instead, what we are going to do 
is we would like to use the theorem from the previous slide. So the theorem tells us this. So it tells us that we are interested in g prime at x equals 7. And apparently that is 1 over f prime g 7. Now, f prime is easy, right? Because this is a polynomial, so I can differentiate that. f prime x equals 5 times x to the power 4 plus 9x squared plus 2. So, no difficulties there. The last bit that is difficult is that here it says 7, and here it says g of 7. So, what is g of 7? Well, there is this relation, if you have an x and a y, then f maps x to y and g goes back. So what I have now is I want to find g prime at 7. So this is going to be 7 now. And then if I do the g of 7, I have to find this x. So I need to find the corresponding x value. So what you need to have is x such that if you apply f to x, that you get 7. So let me write that in words. We need to find x such that f applied to x equals 7. Because if I have that, then you know that g of f of x, g and f cancel. So x is then going to be the g of 7. And if I can find this, then I can compute this here, and I can compute the whole thing, and then I've solved the question. So how can we do that? Well, obviously, if you want to solve this, so you want to find x such that you arrive at 7 if you apply f, th that is a hard problem. So with these types of questions, we always pick it in such a way that you can try to find it. So to solve this, let me do that in yet another other co color. So you should try x equals, well, and then easy numbers. So 0, 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2, 3, minus 3. And if you haven't found it by then, maybe something went wrong. So let's see. F0. F0 equals, um, if I look here, here is F. That's 1. 1 is not equal to 7, so that doesn't work. If I plug in 1, I find 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, which is 7. Great. So apparently, so trial and error, f1 equals 7. So now I have found x. I know that this x here equals 1. So this is how you proceed with these types of questions. You use the general rule, and then you have to find the corresponding point, and you do that by trying several values. And now we have all the bits and pieces, because what I can do, I know this, which means that I should have here 1 over f prime at 1, and then I've solved the question. So let's see. We need to find f prime x and y such that this holds. Well, we've just done that. First, we differentiate f. 
f prime is what we already had. If y is g7 and f and g are each other's inverses, then you need to find y in R such that f y equals 7. And we have done that. By trial and error, we have found that you should pick 1 because f1 equals 7. And then we find that g prime at 7 is 1 over f prime at g7 is 1 over f prime at 1. f prime is here. And if you plug in x equals 1 here, you find 16. So the answer is 1 over 16. And that solves the question. So... If you need to find the derivative of the inverse and it's hard to find the inverse itself, this is the way to proceed. You express it in this way and find the corresponding point. So that is the first topic that we needed here. Second topic, a little bit more about differentiation. So sometimes you do not have an explicit expression y as a function of x but you have for instance a circle is x squared plus y squared equals radius squared so let's look at that example so here i have a circle with radius 2 so we have the x-axis y-axis and this circle here has equation x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared equals 4 and now the question we would like to answer is, consider this point here, x equals 1, y equals minus the square root of 3. I draw the tangent line, that's this black line here. What is the slope of the tangent line? Well, you know that if we have a graph of a function, then you just differentiate the function. But here I have, I, I do not really have the function. Now, because this is relatively simple, you can find y as a function of x. Because if you look here, this tells us that y squared equals 4 minus x squared. So y itself is plus or minus the square root of 4 minus x squared. Here at the point P, you see that y is negative. So at p, I need y equals minus square root 4 minus x squared. You can call this f of x. And then you compute the derivative f prime. You substitute x equals 1, and you find the slope of the tangent line. So that would be approach 1. But as we have seen on the previous slide, sometimes it's not so easy to find an explicit relation. So it is not always possible to do this, to write y as a function of x. So we could wonder if we can do without that. Can we also find this derivative or this, this slope of the tangent line without actually solving for y? And the answer is yes. So this is method one, it's what I just sketched. You solve for y, so you get y as a function of x and you differentiate. And the other one is implicit differentiation. And what we do is that we assume that y can be written as a function of x. So I assume that I can write y is f of x locally close to p. So I substitute that, I replace y by f of x, and then I differentiate this whole equation. So if you differentiate x squared, you get 2x. And then if you differentiate this thing, you find 2 times fx times, chain rule, f prime x. So what we find here is that apparently um, 2 fx f prime x equals minus 2x so f prime x equals minus x over fx and at this point p here i can plug in x equals 1 f of x is the y coordinate so that's minus square root of 3 so at the point p apparently 
the derivative and hence the slope of the tangent line equals one over square root of three. So you see that you can do it a lot quicker here if you do it in this way. And of course the answer is going to be the same. Whether you follow method one or method two, you will find the same slope. But method one is not always possible and very often is more complicated than method two is. So you don't need to find an equation for this fx here. Um, as you see, it, 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 I, I didn't find an equation for that, but still I could find f prime, the derivative, at the point p. So the general approach for implicit differentiation is like this. You replace y by f of x and you differentiate the whole equation that you have, and then you solve for f prime x. So let's look at two examples. You can try to do them yourself, but I will do them in this video. So if you want to try yourself these, these two questions on implicit differentiation, um, pause the video and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to do them. So let's go to the first problem here. We have this equation y squared minus y equals sine of 2x. And the question is find dy dx, so find the derivative. So I'm going to follow the approach that is suggested here with the two bullets. So I'm going to say, well, I have the equation fx squared minus fx equals sine 2x. Now I'm going to differentiate this, which means that I get 2 fx, and then with the chain rule f prime x minus f prime x equals, uh, sorry, I have to differentiate, and the derivative of sine 2x is cosine 2x, and then with the chain rule I get an additional 2. So what we see is that for we get 2 fx minus 1 times f prime x is 2 cosine 2x. In other words, f prime x is 2 cosine 2x divided by 2 fx minus 1. And you will see in the online test and also in the book that um, they often express this as dy dx is 2 cosine 2x divided by 2y minus 1. So y is the same as fx. So I back substitute it now and we get this expression. The other one, we have x times y is e to the power y. So let's substitute fx. x fx equals e to the power fx. And what we get if we now differentiate, for the left-hand side, x times f, I have to use the product rule. So I get fx plus x time f prime x. And for the right-hand side, the derivative of the exponential is the exponential. And then with the chain rule, I get an additional times f prime x. And finally, we solve for f prime x. So what I do, I write this as fx equals e to the power fx uh, minus x f prime x and I find f prime x equals fx divided by exponential fx minus x and again if you want you can write this as y over e to the power y minus x. The interpretation is that if you look at all points x 
y that satisfy this equation, you get some kind of curve in the plane. And if you want to find the tangent line to that curve, then the tangent line has this slope at the point x, y. So if you prefer pictures, let's see, I don't have a lot of space, but let's make a small picture here. So I haven't got a clue what this curve looks like, but in general, you have some kind of curve in the x, y plane. And then if you want to find the tangent line, say here, then to find the slope of the tangent line, you pick, so say this is the point P, X, Y. Then if you plug in the coordinates of P into what we have just found here, that gives you the slope of the tangent line. So that is what you can use this for, and then you don't have to solve the equation. As you can imagine here, if you would like to write y as a function of x, that gets quite complicated. Now, one of the applications of implicit differentiation is that you can use it to find the derivative of the arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent function. And that is the last bit of this video. So let me do that for the arc sine function. So what I'm going to say, so I'm going to show you the first bit of this theorem and the other ones go similar, so I won't show them. But say that we have y equals arc sine x. That means that the sine of y equals x for all the relevant points. Now I'm going to use implicit differentiation. So it's good to write down that you're going to use that in your solutions too. Then if you look back later, it makes sense what you're actually doing. And if you do it at the test and the person marking your work also knows what you're doing. It's always good to put a few words what you're actually doing rather than just putting down equations. So let us write this as sine of fx equals x. And let's us now differentiate on the left and the right side. So the derivative of the sine is the cosine. So we get cosine fx times chain rule f prime x equals one. So we find that f prime x equals one over cosine fx, or if you like, one over cosine y. Now, let us try to express this in x only. And we have seen before when you work with arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, sometimes you can simplify these expressions. And what you would do then is that you look at this relation and you draw a little triangle with a 90 degree angle and an angle y. Um, the sine equals x, which means that the length of the opposite side over the length of the hypotenuse should equal x. Then with Pythagoras, you find square root one minus x squared for the adjacent side. So we can read off that apparently cosine y equals square root one minus x squared. And now you see that all bits come together because I have that f prime is one over the cosine. The cosine, I can express that in, as, uh, in x as the square root of one minus x squared. So what we find here now is that apparently f prime x is one over square root one minus x squared. And that is precisely what it says in the blue box here. So we have now with implicit differentiation derived this relation. One of the things that we learn from this, and we have seen that before, is that for x equals minus one and plus one, so the two endpoints of the domain of the arc sine function, you see that f prime blows up because you have division by zero. So you have a vertical tangent line there. And we have seen that when we were considering in the previous video, the graph of the arc sine function. So you see that here in the derivative. 
So in a similar fashion, you can also show that if you differentiate the arc cosine, you get minus one over the square root. And again, also at the endpoints, um, the derivative gets infinite. So you will have ver vertical tangent lines at the endpoints of the domain. And for the arc tangent, you get this expression, one over one plus x squared. Um, so that is the derivative there. And here you see that it goes to a constant for x going to plus or minus infinity. And that corresponds to the horizontal tangent lines that we have seen when we were considering the graph of the arc tangent function. So that wraps it up for this video. Let's see what we have done. So we first have considered the inverse function and whether we can express the derivative of the inverse function in terms of the derivative of the original function. Then we considered implicit differentiation and we have used implicit differentiation to find the derivatives of arc sine, arc cosine and arc tangent. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.